Artcentric Podcast with Rafi and Klee. Hola, you amazing artists. It's Rafi and Klee. And welcome to our podcast where we're going to be talking about leveling up. Na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're listening to this on uh, some other platform other than YouTube, our amazing rogues are here with us. So if you hear us reading comments, they will be giving us their insights, questions, and all the other cool stuff. It's always awesome to have artists from all around the planet um, having art talk, basically, mm-hmm. which is what these podcasts are about. And today we're going to talk about leveling up, when to level up your art career, and different things like that. And by the way, uh, just as a warning, if you do hear some weird background noises, that's because our neighbors are taking down their old deck and replacing it. So... They are leveling up their patio space. They're, they're leveling up their patio space. So unfortunately, I have no control over that. So if you hear some sounds, that's where it's coming from. Um, but yeah, uh, what was it that you had said about leveling up? I First off, I want to say something here. I'm having one of those days where um, even the thought, because usually when we have a podcast, we have our subject matter and we have a discussion about it and, uh, you know, go into this like 100% knowing not really knowing, but having an idea of what I'm going to say. This morning, I've run into so many tech issues that the idea of leveling up is like <laughs> just way beyond me. We're just trying to keep our pace. <laughs> and the funny thing is that, you know, I know this is something that I've discussed not only uh, in videos, but in my books, that leveling up is important because uh, years ago I saw this um this study that YouTube had done, I think um, it really described like what happened to MySpace and like different things like mm-hmm. that that do very, very well, right? So they they hit that peak of um, becoming popular or famous or whatever it is. They hit a peak and then they plateau and they ride that wave, right? And that's pretty much the, the way that all businesses work and, you know, in our career as well, just about anything where you do all this work and you get to that peak and then you are able to coast for a little while. Now, what they found was that after a while, not not, not a predetermined time, but after a while, what happens is it starts to go back down. So they call it like a plateau because you go up, you level out, and then you go back down. Mm-hmm. And what they recommended was that when you start you know, riding that wave to already start thinking of the next thing to level up. Yeah. So instead of plateauing and going down, you'll plateau and then go up to a next level and then plateau and then go up to a next level. A staircase, if you will. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's one of those things that when things are going well, it's always a good idea to think of, okay, what's the next step Mm -hmm. here? And we've done that. We've done that in our career. You know, it started very simple. Like we were at the flea market. I want to sell art. You know, I want to show my art Um, because you have much more control over showing your art than you have selling your art. Your art is going to sell itself. Your job is to show your art as much as you possibly can within reason, within reason. And then, you know, there came the leveling up. We started doing the market and the shows and we started finding other venues to be able to show our art Mm -hmm. and then we approach businesses and then we you know so like little by little you're you're leveling up and you're you're moving up in your career and how you're expanding your reach and then the online world was like um officially launching our own e-commerce site um getting our membership thing going and all that good stuff uh i think The easiest way to define leveling up for me is to take the next step. And often it's the thing that like, you know, you need to do. And most often it's like the thing that you're afraid to do or that you you're reluctant to do. Yeah. Fiona says here, sometimes leveling up is just not getting knocked off my game when everything goes sideways. Most of the time it's just taking the next step that I'm scared of. Mm -hmm. Oh, you hit that on the head. You I feel like on the head. if there's a little excitement and a little fear, it's probably the next thing mm-hmm. to do. Um, and so also I thought it would be fun since we have the rogue community here to talk specifically about some of the things that they're trying to do to level up and maybe some of the barriers to entry because some of those barriers can be financial or emotional or technical and the like. I mean, and that's the thing. Whenever you're leveling up, there is, that's the fun part. Well, it's, I could call it the fun part, hindsight. 
But that's the part where uh, the challenge is the thing that has caused you not to do that thing in the first place, Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of times when you're first getting started, you know, for us, the online market, when we first got started, the easiest challenge and the thing that we could afford at the time was, all right, well, let's get started on Etsy, Mm -hmm. right? And then little by little, running into roadblocks with Etsy, it was like, all right, we're going to level up and do this other thing. Same thing with uh, when we started our membership site um, with the Rogues. We started with Patreon, and then it came a point where it was like, "Well, we need to we need to level this up because like this isn't doing what I want it to do, mm-hmm. or it's not fulfilling that need." And I think that you know, there's always fear in taking a step in an area where there's a risk, where there is no you know, in the art world, there is no guarantees. You create a fantastic work of art and there is absolutely no guarantee that it's going to sell. Um, So right now with the Spruce... The Spruce Vamoose project. The Spruce Vamoose project that I'm going to be releasing this week um, in order to try and raise funds for the removal of the two trees that we have in our yard. If anybody has been following our journey, you know that we had a bad storm come through here and there's a tree in our yard that is taller than our house that needs to be taken down. So I wanna do a thing where I'm taking parts of that tree and releasing it out uh, for pre-order so that we could raise funds to take the tree down. And then yesterday while we were doing yard work, we looked at the other tree and there's a giant branch that is just precariously hanging on some limbs that come apart too. So at this point, it's like there's this need to raise funds. The thing that I have to be careful of in my leveling up is that what what I'm doing with this project is not based on raising the funds, right? You always have to go into a new project or a new place with the understanding of I might not make a dime off of this. And that really clears your mind. It allows you to move forward in a way where you're not desperately trying to do something. And then when the results don't come, that you get discouraged and, you know, fall apart. Because really, when it comes to leveling up, it's understanding like, all right, this is a new challenge. I'm going to take it. And there's a big chance that I may fall on my face. So I guess what you're saying is step one is check your motive for leveling up. Yes. Yes, indeed. Obviously, we need money, you know, (laughs) but it's got to be the secondary motivator or the tertiary motivator, not the primary. Exactly. Exactly. Zara said, yep, ladder up. Yeah, I like that. Ladder Mm -hmm. up. Leah said, I'm taking several steps to get my dream under control. My business pitch didn't make it. So requesting feedback to use later. I'm writing several scripts that need feedback and now studying art. Yeah, and I mean, Leah, when it comes to that, you gotta think of, you know, it's it's easy to try and cram everything all at once. And I'm not saying that if you have it under control to not do that, like I would never say like put this aside or anything like that. But remember that when you're, when you're leveling up, you are moving into a new place and you have to give yourself that time to adjust and run into those roadblocks like, things not falling into place exactly how you want them to. You don't want to overwhelm yourself with too much. I'm just going to say from experience that every time you level up, it's going to get sketchy financially and emotionally. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It is is going to get very (laughs) sketchy. The whole point uh, that I see when it comes to leveling up is now I'm proposing this new challenge for myself right? Because I have the breathing room to be able to really go through the emotional and financial uh, stuff, you know? And that doesn't mean, because we don't, we don't have extra, with, unfortunately at this point, our buffer with the house and everything is a little low. So we don't have that, the extra finances to be able to give me breathing room, but it's, it's really working on that mindset of not letting it control me. Right. The biggest the biggest challenge comes when financially it's like you are questioning whether or not you're going to be able to do something. And, you know, or the other side of that is counting on, well, if I do this, then I know I'm going to make a bunch of money. No, you kind of have to take the leap of faith. You got to take the leap of faith and understand, like, I may not make a dime off of this, 
but I'm willing to move forward anyway. We made some pretty uh, sizable financial investments that needed to happen um, in order for us to level up with what we can do in-house. And I think that's the balance, right? The investments we made mean that long-term, we're gonna be saving a ton of money on costs doing things in-house. The upfront investment means that we don't have wiggle room for any surprises right yeah. now, <laughs> which is not a, which can be scary. Which is not a fun place to be. And you there's know? there's no expectation of big payoffs anytime in the near future yeah. with any of it. So it is playing the long game. Clover said, "My issue with leveling up is deciding where to use my money smarter. Like I just bought a Cameo Four to make my own stickers. Yeah, Clover, exactly, exactly. in the same vein. Yeah, you're gonna do it in house. The upfront investment is scary, but ultimately, it's a money saver. Yeah, yeah, to it, be able to do. And that's one of the things. Like I just invested in a printer because looking at printer costs, uh, you know, at people printing out my stuff and shipping and all that stuff." I realized that um, I could have bought a printer years ago instead of spending money on, on doing all that, mm -hmm. you know, paying for all that stuff. So it's like areas like that. Well, I'm going to level up. I'm going to do this now. But then along with that comes the additional responsibility of maintaining, you know. And yeah. so there's, there, there's those things. You do want to think about having the ability to maintain the thing that you are leveling up in or dropping things that you're like, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. I'm going to put more focus on this area here. Rachel said, currently being thwarted in my print on demand level up so much thwarting. I just want to get real specific here for a minute because I know a lot of people that do um, print on demand goods are upset right now because there's been major changes with Redbubble and Spring. And a lot of folks are trying to find a happy medium, right? They're not ready to level up so far as like launching their own e-commerce website, but their print on demand options are like being thwarted, as Rachel said. And so what's the interim? And I, if any of you could throw something out there, I recently discovered that Ko-Fi or coffee, however you want to say it, K-O-F-I, could be a good interim solution because you can sell digital goods as well as physical goods, mm -hmm. if I understand it correctly. I believe so. And if I also <clears throat> read right, there's um, ways to get things like Printful to integrate with Coffee, yeah. Ko-Fi. Yeah. And it seems like Ko-Fi doesn't take any upfront fees. It's not like running an e-commerce site. I'll be honest with you guys, when it comes to print on demand, um, you know, for a while there, I was supportive of spring and that was part of my thing. I was like, I'm going to release t-shirts because I like t-shirts. I like certain t-shirts. And instead of going out there and like searching and trying to find the right t-shirt, I could just create my own. I'm, a, I'm an artist, damn it. So like I could create what I want to create and, you know, Spring is, Teespring is integrated with YouTube and you get that YouTube shelf and Shopify is integrated with YouTube and other things like that. And um, Redbubble is the thing that people recommended. Well, I found out with Redbubble, there isn't much of a profit margin. And really you're just kind of like on a marketplace with a bunch of other people. And Teespring recently, uh, I want to say like a year ago or so, they got bought out by someone else and their service. Their customer service their is customer tanked. customer service is tanked. Their service is tanked. I bought a t-shirt from Cassie um, and it took two months. Yeah. About two months for the t-shirt to arrive and there was no... No, no updates. No updates or anything. I ordered something for Klee, a t-shirt for Klee. That t-shirt got... Six weeks. Six weeks it took to yeah. print out. And I'm like, that if that's what's happening to people that are trying to order my stuff... That is not okay. You know, like that that's not okay. So that's one of those things where it's the same thing that happened with Etsy. When things changed with, that, with Etsy, we had to move. We had to adapt. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to level up from that point where it's like, okay, this isn't working... I don't want to deal with this. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with other people's platforms, you're going to run into those issues. So you do have to have an out. You have to have a way to get out. At this point in time, I recommend Printful. It's through my site. Listen, during the pandemic and now, 
they are so good at shipping things out on time. Their quality is good. I I can't recommend them. They enough. are excellent. The challenge for a lot of creatives is where to host their printful integration because they don't have an e-commerce site. And that's where I think a place like Coffee Tish is telling me Coffee Coffee. Like coffee. It's taken me forever to get that in my head because I'm a sci-fi <laughs> nerd. I wasn't sure which one it was either. But coffee, I feel like if you're not ready to launch an e-commerce site, you could utilize coffee to host your yeah. POD um, stuff. Just an option to throw out there. I, I don't know much about it, so more research would need to happen for sure. Valerie said, I've been stuck at the level of making art to sell. Now I have plenty of art to sell, but unconsciously I think I've done everything to avoid the next step of actually selling my art. Time to level up. Yes, Valerie. Yes. It's easy to get, listen, it's easy to get in that place where it's like, all right, I need to create art. I need to create art and um, get to a place where the next step, oh, maybe just a little bit more art. Oh, maybe just a little, well, what if I, you know, and um, those are the challenges. Those are the challenges. Listen, it took Clee three years to buy the music equipment that she needed to buy. More than three years. More than three years <laughs> um, to invest in the music equipment that she knew she wanted. And and during those during those years, it was like, she would invest a little bit in this thing that maybe would compensate for it or like this and that. And she she basically made her life a lot more difficult because the idea of leveling up and actually starting to release music, there was a lot of internal emotional stuff that needed to get worked out. Mm -hmm. um, but she ended up doing it and releasing, you know, a new song. And, and her plan is to now release songs. And that's the thing. Once you make that investment, then that fire gets under your butt because you're like, I better do something with this. Mm -hmm. And you've already invested all this time and energy into creating the art. Now it's time to put it out there. To Regardless, just put it out there. Yeah. My ledger is in the red so hard on the music investments. There is no guarantee I'll ever break even, but it's something that I needed to do because I want to put music out there. Yeah. And so yeah, that's and that's, a, and that's the thing. Like you know, it there. If you were to ask us financially, does it make sense to release music? Absolutely not. You know, we're maybe pulling in from our streams, maybe like you know, ten dollars a month. That's, sometimes not. <laughs> sometimes not even that, and that's not that's not paying any. You know, it, sure, it's anything counts. It, it's awesome. When I think about it, I'm like, we're making ten dollars with our money. That's way more than we were making before. But I know that slowly but surely that may grow. Do I know for a fact that it's going to grow? No. So can money be the thing that motivates the leveling up and the growing of it? Not really. What will eventually happen is that the more we do it and the more we put it out there, the more the more financial the the finances are a side effect of the leveling up mm -hmm. and the putting it out there. You know, and so a lot of people that have a difficult time, they're like, well, things aren't working out. And it's like, well, how long have you been doing it? Oh, three months. It's like that's not enough time to really figure out if your if your motivation is the money, then yeah. Three months? No, absolutely not enough time. It's better if it's a thing that you're so passionate about that it's like, you know, like with music. I've been doing music for 20 years. For 19 of those years, I've just been spending money in order to write music. Uh, it never. It's something I would do even if I knew that I was never going to see any money from it. Um, and so for this past year, you know, or a couple of years, we've been distributing music and earning royalties. And that was that was the level up. It was like, OK, so we've created music. Why and not? It's just sitting on our computer in yeah. a hard drive somewhere. Why not share it? That's the next step. Mm -hmm. And then at this point, the next step is investing in music and putting together a plan to release more music. It was the same thing with the art. It was like. I'm going to invest in, you know, when we started out at the flea market, I was investing in a space and then doing the art. And then little by little, the majority, I want to say that like 75% of the money that we did make went right back into materials and things like that. I was just constantly investing back into what we, what we do. And that's, that's really the way that we live. We're, we're, we love buying materials for creativity. Mm-hmm. 
you know, yeah. and then we pay our bills. But the the money that we really focus on is what we could purchase for creating more stuff. Mm -hmm. Clover said, I'm also moving from stuff that takes me a lot of time like my dice to stuff that doesn't require as much of my time like stickers and cards and prints because my time is the only thing I can't get more of. Exactly. Exactly. I talk about that in my book. It's like a lot of people are really focused on making money. But at the end of the day, money money's not really finite. You guys, they're printing money all the time. There's a lot of money out there. Time, however, that that's finite. That is definitely the thing that's going to come to an end. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I value my time a lot more than I value money. And so that's one of the reasons I don't allow myself to get stressed out about money because that's a waste of time. You don't solve anything by being stressed out. You solve things by putting one foot in front of the other and you keep going and you keep pushing through. And that's a question we get all the time is like, well, what do you do when the finances are really, really scary and it's hard to not focus on money? And that's the answer. And that's the situation that we're in right now. Yeah, like, we do whatever it takes to not think about. I'm not going to solve anything by sitting there and thinking about the money or devising plans like it just I need to just work on something. I got to keep working on something release something new think about which direction i'm heading and really that's that's the place that you want to be in zara said i'm leveling up by having founding members to help shape my idea of bringing beginners from idea to final painting and watercolor by teaching those skills from the get-go that's awesome Zara. that is awesome and also yep. yeah so when you're getting ready to level up sometimes like if you have a really solid community sometimes kind of like soundboarding amongst your community or your peers can be the best thing oh, absolutely. as far as, you know, figuring out which direction you want to go. I mean, some of the things that we're doing in the place that we're in right now is like the community brought those things to fruition. Yeah. Um, it happened organically. It unfolded organically. The membership site would have never happened if not for our community that started on Patreon and listening to what they would like and what they're interested in and what might bring us closer together as a community. And having these conversations, having mm -hmm. a having an outlet to be able to have these conversations where we're talking about the stuff that really is, you know, these were the conversations that we would have with artists all the time at the market, mm -hmm. you know, and they would come to our booth and we'd sit there and we'd, you know, it's just a, it's just a conversation about doing this thing um, without, the only thing that will cause you to quit doing this is if things become you allow things to become overwhelming and you are focused on the things that you have no control over. Kind of like what Tish says here, you have to think about what is in your control and what isn't. Taking ownership of those things you do have control of will take the pressure off the things that you don't. Mm -hmm. And that's really at the end of the day that's that's what you do. It's like you understand you have no control over whether or not your art is going to sell right away. You just don't. The only thing you have control over is like, how often can I put it out there and give people the opportunity to purchase it? Give people the opportunity to meet it. Give people the opportunity to know I exist. I'm yeah. out here. I'm an artist. I do art. I do these things. I do th these other things. And letting people know that this is this is part of your creativity. This is part of what you do. And you do it enough where it becomes known to them that they know, oh, if I want art, I know this amazing artist that blah, 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 blah. And so getting specific with that, like Leith is saying, like, co uh, coffee is great, the site. Uh, but I've had trouble getting the audience, and I think that was lack of experience on my end. I'm considering returning to it, though. And what I was thinking there was, like, coffee and me not knowing much about it, but from what I've seen, like, I would treat it like I had my own website, meaning, like, you can't expect organic traffic. It's more like you have to put out there and let people know, just like you would do with your own e-commerce website. Yeah, Leith, that's, and that's the thing. We did very well on Etsy. Not because of the Etsy algorithm, maybe part of it, right? We did well on Etsy because we sent people there physically. We did shows every weekend. We had it on our business card. If we didn't have anything at the show, we would tell them, just go and visit here. Yeah. If you need to contact us, right? And that's where eventually we realized, like, this is, this is dumb. Why are we paying Etsy? 
for all something, this money. all this money that we could, we could be, we're the ones promoting our, our place. And that's the thing to remember. It's like, you got to talk about it. You know, I, I forget who it was that we were talking to and, you know, we've, we've been, um, binge watching Star Trek and we we're watching Next Generation. And one of the things that I love is every time Data, Data is this android in there, if, you have, if you've never watched Star Trek, Data is an android. Anytime that he was doing a performance or anything like that, literally he would ask everyone. There would be a scene that's like, I'm, you know. Giving you, a recital. Are you coming to my recital tonight? Are you blah, 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 blah today? I'm doing this next week. Are you going to be there? And that's in of itself that's like the best marketing in the world i'm doing this thing are you going to be there so whenever we did the market whenever we did the flea market whenever we did any shows in person or if we had a website we told everyone about it over and over and over because if we didn't tell them how the hell were they going to find out about it you mm -hmm. know what i mean and that's the thing. If there's this timidity of like, I want to just put my stuff out there and I want people to look, find it. And it's like, it doesn't work that way. You got to promote it. You got to promote it. Uh, Zara said, <laughs> I just bought a walk and I want an apron that says I'm walking. I, I love it. I love it. Tish said, I never liked Redbubble's quality. I'm currently using Spreadshirt. Oh, that's one that I was interested in knowing more about was Spreadshirt. But opening up to other options to offer different things that Spreadshirt doesn't offer at this time. And then Tish also said, uh, that's what I did. Coffee allows me to sell stuff without the hassle of monthly fees and having to sit down and design a whole website for hours. I had it set up in like an hour, which was great for me. That's awesome. That's why when I caught on to this, and it, Tish, you were actually the the thing that put it on my radar, the person that put it on my radar. I was like, this is a great interim between being on a platform and having your own e-commerce site. It is that happy medium, mm -hmm. but without upfront fees. But again, always have that exit strategy. Have the exit strategy. it's not something that's owned by you and you never know what will happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Clover uh, said, I just barely got in the black for all my investments <laughs> in January and I immediately invested it all back in and that's three years. Yeah, that's... Clover, that's awesome. That's, and that's the way, that's the way it works. Like, I think about it. So we had, we had a huge installation that we worked on yeah. and, and we each made... I, I think I made 18000 You And made me, 12000 12, So much money, right? You hear that and you're like, holy shit, you guys are balling. Nope. I spent most of that money on the... Inst I didn't need to, but I spent most of that money on the project because I wanted it to be awesome. As awesome as humanly possible. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's funny. And that, that was, you know, not only the project, but then there were art supplies or certain equipment that I needed. I was like, you know what? This is going to help me in the long run. This is going to help me in the future. Right. So instead of taking that money and being like, all right, now we're safe. It was like just investing it right back. And because I knew that we'd be able to pay our bills for the next few months mm -hmm. and we were good. So it's it's funny. I, I don't think that we are money hoarders. We just invest. We just save enough money to be able to pay the bills and have some kind of buffer whenever we're comfortable. We're, we're not in that place right now but we're getting there where there's a little bit of a buffer, but things that get invested in get paid back over time, understanding that it's going to take time for that to become a thing that people are interested in buying. Definitely. And just to expand on the installation and the mindset, right? We did spend the majority of that money um, on the stuff we needed to make the installation amazing. However, that doesn't mean we weren't thrifty. We were thrifty AF. Mm -hmm. So that meant like buying um, liquidation rolls of fabric. From, from some place. We, yeah. we drove several, a lot of miles to get to a place that we found online that had uh, it was fabric. Like, yeah, like a fabric outlet. And we bought thousands of feet of fabric there's no way we could have, we could have spent the whole budget on fabric yep. for that amount of fabric, but we ended up finding this place and fabric was a huge part of our installation. Um, we used materials that were inexpensive for certain things where we could get away with, like, um, 
for certain like paper mache stuff we had to do, we used paper towels because mm -hmm. they gave us the texture we needed and they were less expensive than paper or fabric. Um, so it's things like that. And it's things like buying gallons, like five gallons of PVA glue instead of like piecemealing yeah. little amounts of it. And buying in light. Buying in bulk really makes a difference. All of our lighting was wholesale through a thousand bulbs dot com. Mm -hmm. So we bought it in one fell swoop and yeah, paid a lot for it. And a but... lot of a lot of these places, you guys, like a thousand bulbs dot com and all that stuff, we have on our resources page on the rogue site, um, because anytime that we've found something where it's like, holy shit, this is a great deal or this is really cool or this is a great um thing for somebody, we just share it with you guys out there so that if you need light bulbs for a cool art project that you're working on, you know, you want to, you, you don't want to be paying retail for stuff that you could be getting a lot cheaper. For real. Yeah. Tish is like, I need that fabric place. It's a little place in Alabama. Alabama. That we, they don't have a website. We had to drive there, but Tish will get you the information. And there used to be a place also in Illinois, where you could go and you could buy fabric by the pound instead of the yard, which was amazing, which was how I got so much fabric for set design mm -hmm. and costume design for theater back in the day. Because I was a volunteer, right? So I was paying out of pocket for <laughs> thrifty ways to get the good stuff, mm -hmm. right? So you're not like shorting yourself on the quality, but you're like... Maybe you're holding out for that Harbor Freight coupon, right? And a, and a lot of a lot of and that's the thing when you when you are leveling up, you are making an investment into the next step of something, whether it's getting equipment or um, you know setting up, spending time. Think of time. Time is an investment as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're like going to art shows because you're thinking about doing some art shows and you're going to the markets and you're going to stuff and you're spending a day just walking around talking to artists finding finding out what the information is that's a big part of that future investment and you know all of it all of it is required when you're ready to for the next step because you don't know what the next step is going to bring you don't know exactly what it is that you're going to need to do you might know like okay i got to buy this printer well which freaking printer you know, I think about that. I'm like, I spent so much time looking for what it was that I wanted. And there were a lot of factors involved. What's the price of it? What can it accomplish? Can what it are do, the refills going to be like? Yeah. Can it do what I, what I need it to do? And then investing that and then being like, well, now what? You know, and that's the next step of leveling up. Valerie said, I'm so passionate about art and I feel the same. I do it for no money and invest in it because I love it. If I never sold anything, it wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. You sell, you sell nothing. But the truth is, you're not going to be able to help but to sell art the more you put it out there. Mm -hmm. You know, the more you put it out there. And especially if you're doing it in person, like... You know, that that's one of the things with online, like it takes time to like really build that relationship in per there's something about being able to do markets and shows where like you're sitting there and you're having a cop you you could have an instant connection with somebody in person um when they're standing right in front of you at a show and your artwork is being displayed out there. So it's one of the reasons that I recommend if there's any way, shape or form that you could do in person stuff then absolutely add that to your repertoire. It's good on so many levels. Yeah. It's good for connecting with people. It's good for getting confident about talking about your work. It's good for making connections. It's good for promoting your online stuff. It really can't be overstated how good it is. Um, it's not a long-term plan. You don't want to do it for 20 years, probably. Yeah. The show grind. You're going to want to do the way that you want to do. And yeah, the show grind, you'll get to a point where you can pick and choose what it is that mm -hmm. you feel like doing. Clover's like, I tell everybody when I have a con I'm going to be vending at. And even if they can't go, they tell me about other events they hear about. And every person you tell is a chance at opening a door. Yes. Exactly. Oh, that's so good, Clover. Yes. Uh, Leith is like, I don't talk about my work enough for sure, lol. It will be on my level up plan for this month. Awesome. One of our level up things this year was like getting into the whole grant writing thing and what does this look like and 
can we effectively do like start to really do talks and speaking engagements and in-person lessons rather than strictly online lessons and some of that came with seeking out guidance from people that run grant programs and people that have written grants before and like how does this all work we were fortunate enough to have some really excellent guidance from the Erie Arts Council yep. um, and those those folks. So I submitted uh, our first grant, and mm -hmm. next weekend we are doing a a series of a workshops. Workshop. Yeah, workshops mm -hmm. where we're going to talk about marketing and money and all the beauty of being an artist. And this has been something that Rafi's wanted to do for the longest time. Like he wants to go give talks and share uh, in person. One of one of my favorite things. Uh, from uh, being a corporate trainer was having these conversations and talking to people, standing in a room and basically having a, doing workshops. Uh, it was my favorite part, and which was great because I'm painfully shy, but somehow, some way, I was able to develop that because you know you're forced to do it through work. But then I ended up really, really loving it, and I've always wanted to make it part of what we do. And in the beginning, that's where the videos came from, because it was like, well, if I, I can't do it in person, I'm going to just do it via video, you know, and then the video kind of became its own thing. But I've always I've just wanted to be able to do that. So whenever I'm invited to speak or anything like that, I I really enjoy that. It's nerve wracking, but I really enjoy being able to to challenge myself in that way. It's getting close enough that I'm scared now. Like I was excited last week, but now I'm super nervous about it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I know it's going to be a fun time too. And for me, this is 100% like emotional leveling up, right? Because I'm not super comfortable with public speaking. Um, but I'm excited to like to face it yet again. Patsy said, for me, leveling up my art means to step back and stop trying to do so much at the beginning. Facebook, Instagram, website. Yikes. One thing at a time. Mm -hmm. One thing at a time. You know, like. Um, Who told us, was it last week's podcast, in order to speed up, you first have to slow down? Yeah. Somebody exactly. said that and I was like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, because you can't, you got to, you have to have some modicum of focus when you're trying to level up. And you can't do that if you're stretched really thin. Um, Ginny said, that is crazy. My friend just told me about the fabric by the pound place three days ago. That's awesome, Ginny. I'm glad still to hear that, that it's still there. It was closed down for a while because they only had literally one lady running that place. And when she was on medical leave, they just closed it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ginny, if, do you remember the name? No, I don't. Ginny, I if, lost their if contact. You could, if you could share the name, that would be amazing. Yeah, I would love to have that contact we're, back in my gonna, life. We'll go visit them when we go go visit Illinois. Yep. I would make trips, and I would literally just load up the back of my Jeep with fabric, and they had some really cool stuff. Um, and they do, like, they do bazillion foot rolls of industrial fabric, <laughs> so their cuttings were, like, massive. Patsy said, my level up is to finally put my work out there. I am in a show this month. Yes, congratulations, Patsy. That That's is awesome. awesome. One of our level up is to get back into doing shows, but, like, be choosy about it. Like, we left our canopy in Florida, um, so we had to buy a new canopy in, in order to get back into the, the shows. But we're excited to do and it. And unfortunately, we're at that place where, you know, it's funny. I think about it. I'm like, okay, so I'm not going to complain because we have a house. We did all the repairs that we needed to do. Our studio was shut down for about a year. And things were shut down and in chaos. And yet we are still here. But I think about it. I'm like... You know, it was one of those things where I was like, can we afford a canopy? You know, <laughs> it's like, well, we better get it because we're going to need it. What and... are we going to do? We have a show this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> our canopy arrives the day before our show. Sometimes you cut it close when you're leveling up. Zara's like, uh, there was a post. What would you do if you woke up with a billion dollars? And I'm like, same thing I'm doing now. Yeah. Uh, I think about that all the time. We actually had that conversation yesterday. Yeah. We, we were like, I was like, you know, it's funny. I, I thought about like, what if, what if all of a sudden somebody was like, I'm going to transfer a million dollars into your account. What are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know. Other than like pay off some of the debt because I don't like debt, 
Mm-hmm. And I don't recommend anyone being in debt for anything. And unfortunately, we ended up having to put things um, in debt uh, in order to be able to pay for like $10,000 here and, you know, all that stuff. Other than that, I wouldn't change a thing. Say, what yeah. I'm doing. Like, there's nothing, you know, I was like, would I go? You know, it's funny because the first thing that popped into my brain, I was like, would I go to Paris? No. Why does it? Why is that the first thing that right? everyone thinks of? I wonder if people in Paris are like, don't come here. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly what I'm doing right now. Maybe a little more of it, maybe a little less of it, but ultimately the same. And I, and that's a good barometer, right? Because if there's a thing that you would immediately stop doing if you had a billion dollars, then check your motives. Yeah. And that's, so that's the thing. It's like your motivation for something is ultimately what matters. If you're going to be doing what you do anyway and really thinking about it, because at the end of the day, it's like, so what would you do differently if you had more money? Um, I would probably do the same thing other than the fact that I wouldn't be worried about money. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's the rub. It's like figuring out how can I level up? How can I do this art career thing? How can I whatever? Not so much with more money would fix my problems, but not worrying about the money will fix my problems. You know, and that's that's pretty much the place that I've gotten into because I'm like, you know, let's uh, I I could decide not to pay any of my bills. You could. We all have that choice to yeah. make. And it's like Chris, I think Chris in the beginning of the podcast said like leveling up for him means less focus on fast paintings and more focus on slower works of art that are going to take a longer time. And, you know, if you're thinking about money, that's counterintuitive. But if you're thinking about leveling up in your art, like that exactly makes sense to me. And I think that that's the thing. I So there's a story um, that my brother tells about his, he's with a, a, a band in Chicago called Orchestra 33, and they do these big, giant banquets they're they're like a a high-end band of very very talented savant musicians and the orchestra leader at one point when they left their job him and his wife stopped doing what they were doing um all of a sudden things you know they they, things got bad for them financially they had no money no money and they had kids and all that stuff And my brother, you know, now, you know, they're very successful. The band's doing very well. My brother uh, goes over to his house and they go out in the yard and, you know, everything is beautiful. It's like this big house, all this beautiful stuff. And there's this grill that they're grilling on. And it's like just this beat up. Decrepit. Decrepit, manky ass grill. And Rich is like looking at this grill and like looking at the rest of the house. And he's like, I don't like whatever. And... He noticed that he was like looking at it. He's like, you're probably wondering about the grill. And he says, yeah. You know, and he tell what he told him was like, well, when we decided that we were going to change things and that we were going to do this, what we're doing now, you know, finances just dried up and everything. So we couldn't we couldn't afford to pay um, some of the bills, some of the gas bills or whatever. So like we basically started cooking dinners on this grill all the meals you know so for us and the family he was like and honestly it was really nice like we're like living by via candlelight and all that stuff and like cooking dinners and and things like that and sure enough slowly but surely over the course of a few months um the business started taking off and we were able to you know pay our bills and like you know get get to a place where we needed to get to he's like but it was funny because not having that really put a fire under my butt to make things happen, but also the relaxation of just every night grilling out with my family and all that stuff. So something that I learned from that is like, there is the possibility to make something amazing out of something that other people would fall apart if they were experiencing that. And so that's where I would rather just not worry about I don't need the money in order to not worry about the money and that's always the challenge that's the challenge it's it's getting to that place where you are comfortable just 
I don't know, telling bill collectors to go F off for a while while you figure your shit out. And that can be really scary for a lot of folks. I know it's a fear of mine, yeah. you know, but we, we, what are you willing to do to Susan, make it happen? Susan said, if I woke up with a billion, I would get a house with a bigger art studio in a rural area and get a ranch and a horse. That's Ooh, a horse. Nice. Clover said pretty much the same thing. Bigger house, bigger studio, bigger equipment, and keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Tish said, take care of my children's needs and everyone. Right. And so that's like, right, of course, you would improve the quality of your life or your loved one's lives in whatever way you could. But ultimately, then you're, you, as far as what you're doing, what you're doing isn't changing. Yeah. Um, Zara, as far... Zara said perspective 100%. Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to when I you're think, leveling up. I think about that story too, right? About the orchestra leader. And I'm like, this is in the days well before the gig economy. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. You know, it's like at this point, like there's always an opening for Uber drivers or freelance writers or, you know, whatever you want to do, voiceover actors. This like, was this was in a time where basically everyone was telling him that he was out of his mind. Yeah. Why, why are you doing You have a family. You have whatever. And luckily for him, his wife was right there with him. Mm -hmm. She was completely supportive. His kids were supportive. And they were like, you know what? Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And that's pretty much it. That's always the question I come back to is like, what are you willing to do to keep going with this, what are you willing to do? And if your answer is pretty much anything, you know, that's ethical, yeah, um, yeah. then do it, right? Clover's like, I lived a lot of my life with a negative bank balance, so I'm never worried about it happening again. I survived once, I could do it again. Totally, Clover. I feel you on that. But pre pretty much the story of my life, too. Yeah. I heard that once Bill is sold to a collection agency that you no longer own that debt and it would not change your rating even if it was paid. That's probably, there's probably truth there. I do not know. I know it hurts your credit score, right? I but, mean, you know, and it, it all depends. I've had people, I've, I've talked to, uh, this was back in the day, I've talked to credit card companies and told them I'm not going to be able to pay it. And they wrote it off. I think mm -hmm. I had a, a also a hospital bill. I had a thirty five thousand dollar hospital bill, and I told them I'm not going to be able to pay that. So you could send bill collectors or whatever. It's just not going to happen. Clover's like, I dispute everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? Right. <laughs> yep. And they wrote it off. They wrote it off as a donation. The credit card company wrote off this stuff. So like, you know, I I just it's one of those things where, I and I'm not saying like don't pay your bills you know pay your bills if if you have the means to do it but just don't don't let it control you don't let it control you um because you can dispute it you can dispute it i think about this because a lot of this leveling up stuff like a lot of it is dictated by money like a lot of people will be like you need to take oh you're gonna that's a big risk you know and i'm like when i think about that whole thing Right. And I think about where certain perspectives come from. Right. And here's <clears throat> here's something interesting that I, I just want you to think about just in case it's like, well, I always, you know, like. So back in the day, people were born into indentured servitude, right, because they owed mostly it was they owed uh, a nobleman. You know, noblemen, the, basically the wealthy people in the area, they owed them what they needed to, what they owed Back them. taxes Back or taxes, what have you. whatever it was, right? So they were looked down upon. They were indentured servants. And if they didn't pay their debt, they would get punished or killed. And if they died, then their family took on. So they were looked down upon. Their family inherited the debt. Yeah. Yet... The nobles and the wealthy uh, kings and stuff like that. And lords. And lords would um, write off the debt. A gentleman's they would have agreement. A gentleman's agreement and be like, oh, it's fine. You know, give me some of this plot of land here or this and that. And so it was interesting because we still live in that era where somebody who's considered wealthy could declare bankruptcy. And, and it's, a, it's a smart it's a savvy maneuver. move. 
But if Joe Schmo down the street declares bankruptcy, it's like, oh man, yeah, his life fell apart. He didn't, you know, it's like, it's this, this weird thing. If somebody doesn't pay their bills, oh, then they're a little, but if somebody wealthy doesn't pay their bills or their taxes, like most people, you know, it's like, they don't look down upon in that way. It's always like this comparison game. So it's something that I've really thought about because it is perspective. It is mind stuff. So if I do pay my bills, it's because I want to, not because I have to, or I'm going to get in trouble, or I'm a low life if I don't. So it just, that kind of thing just takes off a lot of that extra unneeded pressure that is there. Mm -hmm. Jenny said a billion dollars, my artist rentals. And that's also how you know that you've got a big dream that you're trying to work towards too, yep. right? And it won't take a billion dollars, luckily, hopefully not, unless the cost of wood keeps going up. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's something that you can work toward little by little, you know, um, and you know that, of course. Susan said, those nobles are nar narcissistic sociopaths and we need to change those ways. We need freedom. Yeah. And freedom comes in here. Freedom comes in, in, your, in your mind, in your perspective, and not following the status quo of the way that things are, you know, and, and this conversation goes into like even further than just, you know, um, leveling up your art career. It's like understanding that like you're going to be taking risks, but who's telling you that it's a risk? This is something that you want. I want to level up. I want to start showing my art. Well, how do you know that it's a, you know, this investment is going to pay off? I don't know. And that's where a lot of us run into issues with that because it's almost like you want to be able to prove that you're smart and that you're savvy. Oh, no, no, I'm investing in this because I know that I'm going to make a bunch of money. It's like, to tell somebody like, I'm investing in this because this would be cool and I want to be able to offer this and this would be a lot easier for me to do or like I'm cutting out a bunch of work that I do here because I think that this is cool and I want to focus on this and I'm going to be putting it out there. Well, is it guaranteed that it's going to sell? No. I don't know. Maybe. You know, and that's the thing. It's like I don't need to prove to anybody that I am financially savvy. I just do what I do and figure things out as I go. And if I'm going to invest in something, I'm going to try to be smart about it. You know, I'm not going to, uh, unless I um, have a freaking awesome opportunity, I'm not going to invest a million dollars into something, you know, first off, because chances are the million dollars would come from other investors. And then I can't guarantee that they're not going to be all worried about money. <laughs> That's true. You can never know with investors. Yep. But no risk, no reward. Sarah said, freedom is within perspective. Clover but said, no risk, no reward. I spent a lot of time living, regretting not doing things sooner. And regretting a purchase is a lot easier than regretting not doing something. I oh, can return items or sell stuff. Yes, Clover. Thank you. That is amazing. That's you know, and that's the same way, that is exactly how I feel. I spent a lot of time in my life living in regret, wishing that I had, oh, why didn't I put my stuff out at a show? Why haven't I done art shows? Why don't I create more art? I should really present myself as an artist. Why am I so shy about talking about my art? Why am I not, you know, and like using all those things as excuses to keep not doing it and just living in more regret. So the moment that I got to a place where I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this. And everyone, let me tell you guys, when Clean and I left and we started this journey, everyone, friends, family, relatives, people that didn't even know us, told us, you are out of your effing mind. You need to grow up and be responsible. You'll be back with your tails between your legs in a month. Yeah. Someone says multiple someones. Your truck will not even make it. What yep. are you thinking? You're nuts. Yeah. You're nuts. You're, it's, it's, there's something wrong with you, right? Fine. I was like, whatever. Okay. I'll embrace that. You know, and, and that was the thing. I got to a place where I would much rather embrace things, uh, embrace the fact that everybody thinks I'm crazy and out of my mind and not willing to be responsible or whatever, than to just try and fall in line, fall into place, right? In what, what they expect I'm supposed to do. And that's really, that's really if, if 
the crux of everything that I do, the rogue books, the artwork, putting myself out there, these videos and podcasts and everything is basically based on that. I am not going to follow the life that someone else expects of me. I'm not going to follow the life that I thought, you know, that that's the way that you're supposed to live. I'm going to follow my life the way that I want every single day and level up and do what I want to do with my life despite what anybody else has to say about it. Like, it's not about them. This is my life. I get to I get to live this for a very short amount of time and the most important to me thing to me is to not live with any regret of oh I wish I would have oh I wish I would have no I'm going to do it now I don't have time for regret from the past and I don't have time to start creating regret now I would much rather be in debt <laughs> and like not pay my bills than to be like oh you know I would have done that it's just that I could never really forward to and I can never you know it's like no I'm gonna do it with what I can with what I have and try not to get in debt and just be really fucking inventive because that's really how we created this career this is how we did this you know yeah so we had nothing but the gall to think (laughs) that we might be able to do this so I guess if if I had to offer final thoughts on this when you're trying to level up, whatever excuses you're using to keep you from doing the thing that you want to do or you need to do, take a look at those excuses and then throw those excuses into a bag of cobras and wrap them up and never look back. <laughs> because you can't. So Gobbles of the Rogue Community recently said, throw that shit into a bag of cobras. And I thought that was hilarious and wonderful. <laughs> but ultimately, it's it's your excuses that keep yep. you from leveling up. Um, even if it seems really real and really big and it's a financial thing or it's a knowledge thing or it's an emotional thing, like ultimately that's the challenge. That's yep. the thing that stops you. Kelly said, no such thing as normal, only didn't, only <laughs> different levels of different insanity. Levels of insanity. Sarah said, I'd say being scared and living doubt of yourself is staying small in fear. You really got nothing to lose. No one gets out alive. No one gets out alive. Yeah, and who cares what they do with your debt after you shuffle off this mortal coil? All right. I think that that is left in a good place. Um, I know that we talked a little bit about leveling up. This is all about leveling up. Uh, what we up. mostly talked about here is, well, you know, it's not the typical, like, this is how you level up, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like step one through five. Well, if you're expecting that, you're on the wrong podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's, you know, leveling up is all about facing those emotional hurdles mm-hmm. and, and getting through them and pushing through and learning from the experiences and really, at the end of the day, learning who you are, right? Who am I? Am I the kind of person that puts my art out there? Or am I the kind of person that is making excuses? Maybe right now I'm the kind of person that's making excuses. So what am I going to do? Put it out there so that I could be that person that puts the artwork out there and faces that fear and does all that stuff. It's, It's simple. No one thing that you're doing is going to define you. Sure. I I remember thinking like, well, it's too late now. You know, I spent so many years not doing this. I'm not an artist. And realizing, like, it takes one day of me doing, creating art and putting it out there to really be able to call myself an artist. It takes one day. Sure, this is what I did throughout my whole life. I'm no longer that person. Now I'm this person. And you get to decide moment to moment. I am the kind of person that worries about stuff and and all that. Or am I the kind of person that, you know what, I don't give a crap. And then you, you move forward from there. And that's that's your leveling up. And it really is any time that you push yourself outside of that comfort zone and decide that you're going to do something that you've never done before, you're leveling up emotionally, physically. Um, I was going to say characteristically because it rhymed. It works. Yeah. See? D- definitely. I just leveled charisma up. Charisma points. Yeah. Charisma uh, points. Strength points. For- Sarah, fortitude. Sarah's like better than death. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Kelly, well, leveling up is different for everyone. Different for everyone. Yeah. Kelly's autocorrect likes the word didn't. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> Kelly's Kelly's driving and she's listening to us. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, the voice to text thing. Yes. 
Okay, so yeah, I think that that's good. And I think that's a good place to leave it off. So I want to thank all the rogues for being here. This was a really awesome conversation, a great conversation. A lot of you guys, super inspiring. Hopefully you guys were also inspired. And for everybody listening to this, thank you guys so much for listening to this. You guys are absolutely amazing and we totally adore you. And other than that, I think it's time to say goodbye. Would Good day. Adios. Oh, yeah, and you could subscribe somewhere. Okay, now we're going to say bye. Bye. Good day. <laughs>